Thank you, sir. This time, Grant Carson, would you lead us in the invocation? Yeah. Pray that you'd be with us. Give us the wisdom, Lord, to make the best decisions for this community. God, we pray that you'd watch over the ones that are sick and pray that you'd bring them home safely and, and heal them from their sickness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the plan of salvation and saving our souls, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good to the flag, the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Ms. Crowder, will you read the roll, please? Roll call. Beverly Atwood. Right. Tommy Belcher. Shane Burton. Here. Alan Carmen. Grant Cothran. Brian Crook, Will Dennis, Jerry Ford, Chris Gregory, Here. Bubba Gregory, Landon Gully, Judy Kerr, David Nolner, Here. Leslie Overman, Mark Presley, Here. Amber Russell, Here. Lonnie Taylor, Here. David Thomas, Here. Steve Whitaker, 19 present, zero absent. Thank you. At this time, assuming that everyone's had an opportunity to read the August 26th commission meeting minutes, if there are no changes, I will entertain a motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Ford, second by Mr. Belcher. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carried. Minutes accepted. Under announcements, the Goose Gala is scheduled for October 26th. Um, let me mention to the court this evening the importance of our continuing to pray for Adam Cothran uh, and for Mark Presley. Mark, we're glad to see you tonight. Um, and also for, for Mr. Richard Johnson's family, continue to remember them. Are there any other, other announcements that need to be made tonight from the floor? If not, we'll move to set. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I want to remind everybody as well, the uh, Hartsville Backpack Program's uh, car show fundraiser will be Saturday, October 12th at the high school. I uh, encourage everybody to come out. And, uh, of course, there's no fee to come look, and they're hoping to have well over 300 vehicles there. So I would encourage everybody to come out. Uh, there there are no additions to be made to the agenda tonight. But let me note that uh, Ordinance 310-2024-10 is misnumbered in your packet. This will be corrected at, for the second reading. If there are no other uh, adjustments to the agenda, I will entertain a motion to approve or set the agenda. Motion by Chris Gregory, second by Mr. Ford. All in favor say aye. Any opposed, no. Motion carried. Uh, if anyone wishes to speak to the uh, commission from the public tonight, if you would approach the podium and, and enter your name, then you'll be called upon at the proper time. Under the county mayor's report, uh, TDEC has not signed up the, made the, final, the final signing of the contract on the ward school project, so we're waiting on that. Um, the deadline to have that project finished is still December 31st, 2026. So we, we have well over two years to work on that project, but we're kind of pressing GNRC at the present time to, to make sure we're on track. Um, Mr. Bubba Grigger, is it okay if I, uh, announce, I know you're going to have a report, but it, it appears the park's going to be finished by October 10th. Are we still on track? That's what I'm understanding. That's really all I have under the mayor's report. We will now address committee and board reports uh, under codes and zoning. David Thomas. Code and zoning met on uh, September 5th. We did not have a quorum. So there was some general discussion and we adjourned. Any further report, David? That, that's it, okay. Under public works, Bubba Gregory. 
yes, the public works had a meeting on September the 12th at six. Uh, uh, first thing we discussed was the playground. Uh, looks like everything's moving pretty well. They poured uh, uh, concrete was to be poured and it was to be guarded for 24 to 48 hours to prevent damage and all the other play equipment is installed except the swings. Uh, and that, like far as we know, it's still up to be completed October by October the 10th. Uh, then we discussed the 2024 postseason. A rough estimate looks like we're going at a loss of about 23.5 this year. And that's a rough estimate. And he's hoping that, that uh, these figures will get better. He didn't have everything complete. That, uh, that was a rough estimate. We're supposed to have a probably the final estimate this coming meeting we have. He said uh, the reason for the for the bigger loss was the payroll was more this year uh, for the the uh, the guard the ones that run the pool and the uh, the lifeguards too and the chemicals is has been up also it seems like the chemicals don't it don't last as long as they used to as far as the chlorine tablets and stuff um, and we really got to start discussing the pool more in the next meeting or two. We got to determine if we're going to rebuild the pool or some of that pool's about lived this lifetime. But more discussion to be on it in our in our coming meetings in the next few months. We also discussed the board of education, the dumpsters. Uh, I thought we was going to have a, a deal tonight where the, our, our committee recommended to the commission, but it'd probably be brought next month. Uh, we recommended approval arrangement for Board of Education to pay 40000 annually for trash pickup. If Mr. Gully can give you more information on that, if y'all got any questions about that. Anybody got any questions? And that was about it. We discussed the residential trash can, but we, we're going to discuss it more in our next meeting. Our next meeting is scheduled for October 17th at 6 o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Um, under Part C, Financial Committee, Mr. Gully. Yes, Finance Committee met last uh, Monday night, 6 p.m., regular uh, monthly meeting. <clears throat> Went through the uh, trustees' cash balance, uh, all trustees' cash balance and financial summaries uh, for the month of August. Uh, looked good. Had a, um, a recommendation to accept those uh, as presented. Next up, we had a couple of uh, budget amendments. First one was a fund balance trial for the sheriff, um, which did not receive any recommendation from the committee due to uh, uh, some questions that were lingering. Uh, it was a fund balance trial, not supported by um, the first budget. So there may be some discussion to have there. We just asked for additional information. No. Uh, next one was the grant um, for the... Uh, so a couple different grants, if you go look at, uh, that were just approved. Uh, that was grant money coming in. Those were a favorable recommendation. Uh, the 111 Fund Urban Service, the Connected Communities Facility, that's the Ward School Grant, uh, 317000 of that is county money. The rest of that is grant money uh, approved by the uh, favorable recommendation for the from the committee. That's about all that report has. Thank you, sir. Are there any other reports to be made this evening? Any other committees? Hearing none, we will move into active business. The first order, which will be electing a chair for the next year. Um, let me say before we do that, it's been a pleasure for me to serve as chair this past year. Uh, but at this time, we will open the floor for nominations uh, for the position of chair for the county court. Mr. Thomas. I nominate Lonnie Taylor. Lonnie Taylor has been nominated. Are there other nominations? Yes, sir. Move the nomination to season. We elect Mr. Taylor by acclamation. I hear a second. Second by Mr. Whitaker. Discussion? Should there be any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Taylor, will you assume the chair?
thanks to everybody. I want to tell you how much I appreciate your vote of confidence. Um, if you know me, you know I'm not a person that out seeks any kind of glory. I'm not seeking glory or any kind of notification or notoriety for anything. Um, I've told everybody if if I was nominated and elected that I'd be proud to serve and I'll do the best of my ability. Um, it'll take me a little bit to get my feet wet at this. Um, you know, it's a bunch to take on, but I'm you know more than willing to give it my best. So uh, the next order of business here is to a, a elect a pro tem. So uh, we have a vacancy in that. So we at this point in time, we'll take our nominations. Mr. Gulley. Mayor McCall. Yeah, Mayor McCall. Do we have any other nominations? Mr. Thomas. Gregory. Okay. All righty. Well, Chris Gregory. Just a, a question for Mr. Baylor. I know the mayor can serve as chairman. Is can he serve as chair pro tem? I'm reading the charter as we speak. So give me one moment. Copy that. Article section Article 2.03 regarding presiding officer and the germane language of that particular clause states the commission shall elect from its membership a chairman pro tem or tempore to act in the absence of the chairman. I read that to mean that that would be from the membership of the commission because the preceding paragraph and the language states. Uh, the chair specifically the mayor can be elected as a as the chairman it is specific in your charter uh, but it is not with regard to your chairman pro tem so it would be the opinion of uh, after reading that particular provision of the charter that the county mayor of Trousdale County cannot serve as the chairman pro tem Commissioner Thomas that being said, Mr. Gregory, would you reconsider? Okay, so we have Commissioner Gregory. Do we have any other nominations? Yes, Chris. Move to cease nominations and elect Bubba Gregory by acclamation. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad. I told you I'd get my feet wet. So uh, do we have any sec do we have a second on that? Second. Second by Landon Gully. All right. Now, with, uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. I just thought thank everyone for that and to make sure, Lonnie, you make every meeting now. <laughs> I have a copy of my attendance record now. The last 24 meetings, I've been at 22 of them. I've got it over there, or 19 of them, I think it is. So our uh, next order, order of a business here, it says that uh, we have some appointments here for judicial commissioner. Uh, it says Lisa Scruggs is to be reappointed for a four-year term. Do I have a motion on that? We have a motion by uh, Brian Crook. And second by Mr. Gregory. All, right. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. 
All righty, moving on, resolution 2024-16813, land purchase. Uh, the mayor and uh, Councilor Beller are uh, here to discuss the purchase of this property. I think the mayor has had more dealings firsthand than, than I have on that. Uh, I think that he, he would be able to enunciate more clearly the deal than I would. Thank you. Yes, I, I reported to the work session last week that uh, Mr. Barnett approached me oh, two or three weeks ago about his intention to move to another part of the, the country and that he was uh, wanted to give the county the first option on that property and that we were interested in it in the beginning. It was noted in that meeting that the price had been lowered from 300000 to one forty nine nine. Uh, which I thought was an excellent opportunity for the county to purchase that property, whether or not we choose to place the jail there. Uh, it uh, certainly offers a uh, considerable amount of control for the county as parking, whether or not we build the jail there. But it's a first step toward um, our move to, to build a jail. So the property, I think, is priced right. I've had two people approach me since then to say they would be glad to purchase the property the county wasn't interested in. So at this time, I think it's a very wise move on the part of our county to secure that property. So I'd like to open the floor for discussion on this matter at this time. Yes, sir, Sheriff. One thing is uh, my name My name needs to be taken off at resolution. According to the state, I don't have the authority to negotiate or purchase any property. It's strictly left up to county legislative body. I gave everybody a copy of the TCA code and a paragraph on it. Uh, conflict for interest, I don't need to be involved in it. The only thing I could really need to be involved in whenever they start building the jail as far as how big a room needs to be or that type of thing, square footage or what needs to go here and go there, working with the architect. That's the only involvement I have in it. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Gully. Motion to approve. We have a motion, do we have a second? Get that. Copy that. Okay, we have a motion and second, so uh, sorry. Church name off of it there. Yes. Somewhere we'll get there in a second. There we go. Motion to approve striking uh, the comment, whereas the mayor and Sheriff Russell have striking Sheriff Russell and just stating the mayor has entered. Okay, we'll, be, we'll that's next. Uh, so we have a motion from Mr. Gully. Do we have a second? Second. Second, my shame. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, Sorry. Oh, it needs to be recorded. Sorry. Oh, you. Okay. Yes, sir. If we're doing a roll call, we're voting on the motion as stated to purchase the land with the stricken pieces, correct? Just make sure we're all clear on that. Oh, I thought we were voting on the uh, striking the, the Sheriff Russell's. Uh, his motion was to approve. That's with, correct. With, okay, with, was to approve. With, okay, with, then we'll vote. Yeah, so then I guess this, we're going to do a vote on. Copy that. Got a little out of order there. We'll be okay. Fantastic. All right, so I guess we're going to vote on this uh, this juncture. You yep. don't have a second. Cast your votes. You don't have a second. I thought we had a second. We did, but he struck it. Okay. Mr. Thomas. I'll second Mr. Gully's motion. Thank you. Mr. Gully. So my understanding of the motion is the vote on is the resolution as written without the words and Sheriff Russell have, including the word has in front of has, 
with approval of the entire motion. But that's what I was all wrapped in one. Up. Thank you. I think that's what was seconded. Yes, thank you. If you guys can please cast your votes. All votes have been cast. Can you uh, please give us the results? So we have 17 yes, two no. Motion carried. Thank you. So now we move on to ordinances three. Uh, we got 310 2024 10. Rezoning of A1, or rezoning A1 to R1 on Crenshaw. Uh, Ms. Mahan, do you have anything to speak on that? I'm sorry. Yeah, we, Go ahead. Yes, we did. Okay. Motion carried. All right. We'll make sure. Yes. Ms. Mahan. Uh, yes, this is. Excuse me. Uh, Johnny and Linda Adcock um, would like to rezone one acre of their property from A1 to R1 so that their granddaughter would be able to build a house. As you can tell by the map, it has been highlighted where they would like to select that to be done. And they are here in the audience with us. What questions might you have? Mr. Gully. Motion to approve. Thanks. Mark, I didn't see you back there. Okay, thank you. We're going to record this. So we ready to cast our votes, right? Okay, moving forward, we're on Ordinance 311, 2024 11, Personnel Policy Revisions. Since the Personnel Committee has reviewed a few sections of the personnel policy over the past months, there are two revisions to be brought forward. Section 5, Item E.4, under sick leave. This cleans up the language that has been, uh, that has the employee exhausting available leave time before leave without pay can be applied. This keeps employees from stockpiling leave. Uh, if any leave is available, it must be taken. And then section 5B.10 under holiday pay, adding an item stating that if an, if an employee is in their six month probationary period and had a pre and had pre-planned to take time off before a holiday to before or after a holiday, this request, re request must be filed. Uh, with the supervisor and HR office within the first week of the hire in order to receive the holiday pay. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense to me. All right. 
Do we have a motion to? Thank you. They'd like to record this with our devices, please. Prepare the ballot. Fund 101 general balance, uh, see fund, fund fund 101 general services. I'm sorry. It's the first time I'm up here doing this. I'm sorry, guys. Fund 101 general services, 101-01F, uh, sheriff salary adjustment changes in the sheriff uh, department due to uh, promotion, certifications, and training warrants budget changes. It says that we got the amount of $16,544. Mr. Gully. I'd make a motion to approve with the email that was sent, justifying clarification for where that dollar those dollars are at. Yes, we have a motion and second. Mr. Gregory. Uh, this email Mr. Gully refers to, uh, when was it sent? Because I, I haven't received anything along that line. I don't know if any of the other commissioners have or not. Mr. Uh, Mr. Russell. I want to speak on that. I gave everybody a, a form here, employee change form, on the $5 an hour raise that was increased, it was brought up. Uh, this person at the top of the page was uh, promoted to sergeant, and the reason he got such a big raise, he's only been with me for a year and a half, and he was at the base pay, and uh, over half my staff has been with me for less than two years. And he's the only one that put in for it, and he got uh, increase of this amount. And uh, this was turned into the office whenever he got the promotion. And to really, this should never be brought should been brought up. The money's in the budget for this position, and uh, for me to promote who I see fit is my business. This should never even be put up. A simple phone call would have took care of all this instead of throwing it across the table for everybody to look at. But it didn't happen. You know, this form was sent to the mayor's office whenever we even got to raise this form here. And I gave y'all a copy of it. And it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't ever even came up. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Thomas. Mr. Beller, when we're dealing with our budget, if we move funds from one line to another, does that have to be done through a resolution or can that just be done by Mrs. Thomas at her discretion? Budget amendment, correct? But what I what Sheriff just said, it, it was already put in his budget, correct? If you're moving items from one line item to another, uh, and I believe that would require a budget amendment. Um, but I think what Sheriff has said is that this was already included in his budget uh, prior to uh, the one that we approved in uh, for the fiscal year 2024-2025. Am I correct in that assertion, Sheriff? That's correct. I had a jail, uh, change in jail administrator. My lieutenant went to the jail administrator. The sergeant place that he took went to lieutenant. And it was already in the budget. This shouldn't have even been brought up. So far, we have a motion and a second. So we're at this point. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, Mark. I was just going to ask. A since this particular budget amendment specifically is a fund bank, fund balance fraud, do we need to withdraw it and bring it back as as a internal budget amendment, or can we can, can we switch it like that? Because 
So what's presented to us is a fund balance problem. I'm not the one to ask that question to, okay? Uh, I, 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 that wasn't behind the inner workings of, of how this was calculated and from what fund it was, it was being drawn off of, whether it was a fund balance or whether it was, I just answered the question that Mr. Thomas asked me about the, what it takes for a budget amendment. Mr. Gully. Uh, just stating that as the motion I stated was as written that we have right here. Do we have a second? We have a second? Okay. Then uh, you were ready for the vote, so we will register on our device, please. Yes. I didn't see. Hard, hard to see around these. Oh, you explain. I've kind of got lost in all of the went back and forth. What are we voting exactly on? We are voting on the uh, salary adjustment that. Uh, we had on this that we had in front of us right here okay with mr gully go ahead with your adjustment uh we are voting on 101 uh, 01f sheriff's positions request is uh the 101 fund balance general service budget uh as follows the sixteen thousand five hundred and forty four dollars in the sheriff's uh department for those three different line item breaks uh that were presented to budget and finance that's what the motion was to approve To clarify, if you'll register your votes, please. All votes are in 18 yes, one no, motion carried. So this, uh, the next order of business that I have here is uh, 101-2G grant funding. This amendment covers three different grant funding for uh, the county. It says CDBG TV. This is the uh, food insecurity grant assisting with a backpack program and help center. The THDA home grant, ad uh, additional funding for the THDA home grant the BRC broadband ready communities uh, installing public Wi-Fi and public IT education. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second, Mr. Whitaker. So we have prepared the ballot. Any discussions on the matter? Prepare the ballot. It's in. 18 yes, one abstain. Will motion carried? Mr. Gregory. I just like to like it to be noted that uh, I abstain with cause as, as I'm a board member for the backpack and program and for the help center. So uh, I'll abstain with cause. Thank you. Next, we move to fund 111 Urban Services. The 111 01 FG Connected Community Facilities Grant Funding for the Ward School Renovation Project. Okay, we have, we have one, we have, we have a motion and a second, Mr. Gregory and Mr. Ford. We have any discussion? Mr. Ford. So we'll bear the ballot, so we will now record our votes, please.
Of all the votes in, 18 yes, one no, motion carried. All right, thankfully. All right, so now we move on to notaries. Uh, Ms. Rita, can you please provide us a list? All right, there they are. So notaries to be elected today is uh, Linda L. Black with Core Civic and Joshua D. Morton with Core Civic. Amber? Second. Mr. Uh, Gregory. So this uh, this will be a voice vote. It says it's a voice vote. So all in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Moving on to other business. Is there anything that needs to be discussed for tonight's meeting? <laughs> Public comment. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Alder. Congratulations. I'll just speak I, a little louder. I know. I will. And here's the thing: <laughs> I've got like 48 or 50 eyeballs looking at me. First of all, number one, number, and then number two. I've been up since 4 a.m. Uh, a little weary, but other than that, I'll be fine. Um, it. I'm not going to lie to you. This is a whole lot more intimidating than I thought it would be. All right, but just, just being straight up honest with you, um, I've conducted meetings before, but not like this one. This one's actually considered to be court, so it's a little intimidating, but I can get past it. Uh, I appreciate your confidence, and again, I appreciate uh, everybody supporting me on this. Like I said, I wasn't seeking it, but if nominated and elected, I'll be proud to serve the best that I possibly can. Mr. Gregory? Uh, just a quick question. Uh, it, was, it was mentioned at work session. We expected to have the architect here tonight. Is uh, do we have a do, do we have an update on when we're when we're supposed to have, hear from the architect on the jail? Do we have an update on when we're supposed to hear from the architect? I think I think it was that he was supposed to be here tonight. Oh, okay. He's not coming to speak to us. No, okay, I thought that was what we were looking for, but maybe I'm wrong. Thank you. Public comment. We have anybody registered, signed in for public comment? Mr. Gully. Thank you. Be careful going home. <laughs> <laughs> 